In this tutorial I'm going to look at the simple uh, dot plots, histograms and stem and leaf plots. First of all I'm just going to bring up a histogram and a dot plot of selling price and just a simple one. And I'm going to bring up the dot plot as well because these are very similar. A simple one with selling price. The major difference between the dot plot and the histogram is simply how it's displayed in that this has dots in it and in this case it's drawn with rectangles. In both cases we can read the selling price along the horizontal axis. With the histogram you'll have to go to the y-axis to see how many houses are in that group, about 10 um, and about 40 houses in this group, nearly 60 houses in this group etc. With the dot plot each dot represents a data point. If you've got a lot of data then sometimes each dot will represent two or three data points. With both of them we can change how these are displayed. Now with the histogram if we go to edit bars binning it calculates how many bins it wants automatically and you can change this if you don't like the way that it looks. So at the moment it's got 17 and we could ask it to do say 25 and now each bin is smaller and will have fewer and we get a finer scale, a finer picture emerging. And the same thing with the dot plot here. If I click on this graph, edit dots, binning, um, at the moment it's got 42 intervals. I could bring that right down to make it look like the histogram and put say 25 intervals. And now we get a chunkier looking graph and each dot here will be worth more houses. It says along the bottom here, each symbol represents up to two observations. So the dot plots and the histograms are very similar and it's a matter of preference as to which one you want. The third one in this group of displaying the data is the stem and leaf plot which doesn't get used so much but it's a nice nice plot to use. The stem is this part here and these numbers here are supposed to be the leaves. Now this number here gives us the first part of the the selling price and this part here gives us the second part of the selling price. We have 278 observations and the leaf unit is $10,000 um, so that would be $10,000 and that leaf unit tells you what scale each one of these numbers is on so that 6 refers to 6 lots of 10,000, 60,000. So in the first group here and we know there's 17 in the first group We've got 60,000, 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, 80,000, 80,000, etc. up to 90,000. And each one of these leaves in observation. In the next group, one uh, refers to the next scale up, so that goes in front of this number, so that's 100,000. 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 110,000, 120,000, or like 130,000, 140,000, etc. The very first column here tells you how many are in each group in a cumulative way in that it adds it up. So there's 17 in the first group, 17 plus all the leaves in the next group makes 88, plus all in the next makes um, 129. And then counting up from the bottom, actually the one in brackets I think that is just 129 data points in the middle group. Counting up from the bottom we've got one in this group, one uh, 400,000 dollar house, four hundred and seventy thousand dollar house. Then we've got two more values here, so one and two, that makes three data points, etc. When you've got two hundred and seventy eight data points, a stem and leaf graph is not the easiest to read. If you only had say twenty or thirty data points, these are quite handy and you can actually go through and work out where the median and where the quartiles are by hand just looking at the graph. If you turn it up on its side, you'll see that you get roughly the same picture that you would get with the dot plot and with the histogram. And plus, computers are getting so advanced now that with the dot plot, you can just wave the mouse over it and it'll tell you what the observation is anyway, or which bin it's in, which gives you pretty much the same information that you would have got with your stem and leaf plot of old.